Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Now, we're continuing our look into the book of Job, and today we're going to begin chapter 7, which is a continuation of of Job's plea of relief. You see, he says in verse 5, my flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust. My skin is broken and become loathsome. Now listen to that again, friends, because here is a man who is so stricken by a disease that he says, my flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust. My skin is broken and become loathsome because these boils, these blisters, you could say, are breaking out upon his body and the pus that is oozing from them is being filled with dust and the worms are feeding upon them. And so Job, it would appear, has many rights to complain against the Lord. But let us be warned, we are never to do such. You see, as we've discussed, God has sent these trials into our lives for very specific reasons. And when we question God in a small way, we are blaming God. And that is a position we should never put ourselves in. But let's look at some biblical examples to see exactly what the Bible has to say about that. But before we do, let's look at verse 24 when Job says, Teach me and I will hold my tongue. Cause me to understand wherein I have erred. So basically, Job is saying, If I am a learned man, I will remain silent. But as long as I am unlearned about these things, I will speak foolishly. And that is exactly what he does. Again, in chapter uh, 7, which is our text today in verse 11, he says, Therefore, I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak it in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Now, his complaint is against no one but the Lord. And this, the Lord does not take lightly. For instance, in chapter 38 of Job, we see the Lord's reply. Then the Lord answered in verse 1, Job out of the whirlwind. And he said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? In other words, who is this that comes into my presence and speaks so foolishly? Gird up now your loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Do you understand? Can you... Can you see the sternness of the Lord here? He says, who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man, for I will demand of thee. He says in chapter 40, verse 1 through 6, Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproves God, let him answer it. Now listen to what Job says. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Once I have spoken, and foolishly it was, but I will not answer, yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. And so basically Job is saying, Look, I am a worthless creature, and out of my foolishness I spoke. But I will put my hand upon my mouth and remain silent because I have nothing left to say. And the reason for that is Job is focused upon the moment. He doesn't see the beginning, the present, and the end. He only sees the present. And so too we, friends, when we're going through difficult times, we're caught in the moment. But we don't see the situation as God sees the situation. And that's why the Bible tells us not to complain against the Lord. For instance, look at Numbers chapter 14 and verse 27. 
It says, how long shall I bear with this evil congregation who murmurs against me? I've heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. And of course, God deals with that murmuring. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, we're told to do all things without murmurings and complaining. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, we're told in everything, in everything, the good and the bad, give thanks. In James chapter 1, verse, beginning at verse 2, we're told, my brethren, count it all joy or count it all profit when you fall into divers temptations or divinely sent trials, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. You see, God sees the outcome of the trial. And so we're to trust God rather than complain. And that's what Paul means when he says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 11, I have learned in whatever state I am therewith to be content. I know how to be abased or to be humiliated, and I know how to abound or to have much. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to have much and to suffer need. Why? Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, the focus isn't necessarily by Paul here on the strength that Jesus provides him to endure all things, but rather the focus is upon Paul understanding who Jesus is. And because he understands who Jesus is, he understands that all things will work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And so as much as we desire to live in a state of comfort, we only grow when we go through the trial. And that may be a sickness, that may be a disease, that may be imprisonment, that may be punishment, that may be torture, that may be persecution, that may be death. But the fact of the matter is, is our attention, our allegiance, our adoration, our trust is upon the God that we serve and not the circumstances that we endure. And that's the mistake that Job makes in our text this morning as he continues in his plea for help. His accusation is against the Lord, and as he accuses the Lord, he places himself in a position that no man ever should. And when we do this, we speak foolishly, we speak unwise, and we speak unlearned. And yet we today have a benefit that Job didn't have at that time. We have the finished work of God, the Word of God, from Genesis to Revelation, 4,000 years of recorded history of documented testimony of both men and women who have served the Lord and have succeeded in areas and have failed in areas. And we can learn from their successes and we can learn from their failures. Even here in the story of Job, we can learn not to complain against the Lord, not to complain against our circumstances. For when we complain about our circumstances, we accuse the very God whom we claim to serve. And so friends, I encourage you, open your Bibles, read your Bibles, study your Bibles, because this is how we become a learned people. This is how we become a wise people. This is how we know what God expects from us and what God will not tolerate from us. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful that you're again with us this morning. I pray that your journey today with the Lord Jesus will be blessed and fruitful, that you'll walk in his spirit, and that in all things, good and bad, you will give thanks. Now, as he wills, and until tomorrow, friends, I love you. I'll see you on the next video.